Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Democracy First, our virtual town hall, where diverse civic-minded people from across the nation gather Monday through Friday at 1.30 p.m. to discuss current events, legislation, civics, and politics, and the effect they're having on our democracy, a two-century-old work in progress shaped by we the people. And we gather here to continue that work, making good trouble. We welcome new voices and treasure the old in our conversational roundtable centered on respect, where we strive for a safe, welcoming space that is informative and inspiring because it's fact-based and solution-oriented. We do honor a few rules of etiquette, one of which is we understand that we can uh, disagree without being dis uh, disrespectful. We can attack arguments or ideas without attacking people. We raise our hands here to speak and mute our mic when we're not. And this is for sound quality and also um, being respectful of other speakers, allowing them to do so without interruptions. And a reminder, it is a daytime recorded space. So please keep this in mind with the personal information you share and the language that you use. Otherwise, please don't be shy. We'd love to have you join us in the conversation. If this is your first time here to do that, use the microphone icon over to the left. Once you're brought up to speaker, use the heart icon over to the far right to raise your hand. You'll get a panel of emojis when you hit that heart icon and the hand that's to the far right is how you raise your hand. You will be called on to join in the conversation. We look forward to having you. And at this moment, I am going to take an opportunity to say good morning to my awesome co-host, Eugene, and see what's on his mind today. Again, while I send out some invites, and put some information in the Jumbotron. Um, so let's get the conversation started. Eugene, how are you? I am doing good. Happy Indigenous Peoples Day. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just not going to get me to celebrate a guy that, you know, helped commit genocide, right? Um, but it, you know, for, for, for uh, my ancestors, you know, it is a day I think about my ancestors and, you know, where our family might've been, um, had it not been for so many of, the, of them that were massacred, stolen, you know, just a lot of different things. So I, I, I do spend part of my day in remembrance of them. I did post a video. Um, I, the reason I, I like this is by a guy named, uh, Superman hip hop. Um, uh, he's a indigenous artist. Um, he's a poet. Um, he does what's called fancy dancing. Um, we have big uh, contests in our powwows with these. Um, and it's a chance for some of the great uh, sewers um, to show off their work as well as some amazing dancers. And remember, these are all stories that are being told um, or, or prayers as is sometimes referred to. Um, but anyways, I, it be, I posted this one up in the nest because it tells us the story in the first part of it from one of our elders about how, you know, it wasn't until just recently that we were able to, as young people dance, um, only the old people over 60 were able to dance. And this was how they, they were um, trying to, you know, it, it was considered witchcraft to them, right? Like our dancing, our stories, our, our traditions, you know, they, that, that was anti-Christian. And, and so they tried to make it law that we could not. Um, so anyways, that's why I posted up there. Um, otherwise, you know, I hope everybody's having a great day. I'm going to listen a little bit and let everybody else kind of start getting this conversation going. Um, because I talk so much about what was important to me today. All right. Aww. Thank you. Well, so far, Graham is the only one who has joined us on the stage. And um, so he has his hand up. I want to welcome him to the floor. And um, 
see what's on his mind. I did put something up in the Jumbotron that I would like for us to get to at some point in our conversation today. Um, it is from a, an investigative journalist who has uh, done a lot of great work. And uh, this article that I have posted up is her um, she has a few other people featured in it. Midas Touch is one of them, but it's um, a um, kind of unraveling of the ties that um, point to the anti-democracy push that we have going on in this country, who's funding it, and you know, it ties back to the things I talk about with Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, the Disclose Act, Many of these things overlap um, that um, CNP organization, the Mercers, all of it. And I think it's important for us to remember all of these things because some of this, these things that are going on in our country currently, these anti-democratic uh, movements, whether it's QAnon, the you know, Oath Keepers, the Insurrectionists, whomever, um, the underlying thread, um, the common thread in all of them is a, a anti-democratic push and movement. And we need to see who's funding some of these and the Mercers and the Cokes and the Steve Bannons, they all are center um, points in many of these organizations it, and in some cases, all of them in some way. So. Um, anyway, I'm going to get to Graham. And uh, so please, guys, take a look at that article. Do, um, you know, just look at it and review it. I think it's very important with the January 6 hearings that are going to be airing this week on uh, Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. And we will be having a watch party during that time. And I think it's important for us to, like I said, not just look at the actual incidents that occur, but um, the things that led up to it and, and, and so forth, um, the things that are behind it. And that's the people and just the kind of um, major incidents that have occurred. And um, like, it's not the first time in our country, but they seek to whitewash a lot of this and just erase it. So it's important for us to get a good understanding of it. So anyway, um, Graham, what's on your mind this morning? Oh, hello, everyone. And thanks, Dee and Eugene. Uh, well, this morning, um, I'm celebrate, or I wanted to just wish everybody a, a happy Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, I live in uh, what they call the Wabanaki confederacy which is five independent ind indigenous nations uh and that spans uh canada and america so by default i'm celebrating today too which is um canadian thanksgiving so we're having what we call a feast dinner tonight so uh, well, happy, happy thanksgiving graham <laughs> <laughs> i don't i don't recognize the the holiday i'm not going to go into the politics but i i am having a feast dinner tonight um and honoring uh the indigenous uh and stores and uh our peace treaties uh here uh we're on unceded lands this is indigenous territory by international law so uh, we're going to be having a great day i'm looking forward to the space so thanks well, thanks so much. I appreciate it. I'm making it. fried bread today, <laughs> Graham. <laughs> oh, don't give me that. I can't eat that. There he is talking calories already so early uh, in, the, in the conversation. I, I am but... so addicted to that stuff. I And why I only make it a couple times a year. Well, awesome. Uh, take some pics and um, let us um, see your work. Well, I will. Okay. Okay. Well, Jima Riri has come up and has her hand up. I want to hear from her. And uh, again, like anyone who is in the gallery listening, you know the rules. Don't be shy. Come on up and join us in the conversation. Some folks are, you know, off today and others may still be working. So I understand how that goes as well. We're just glad that you're here. And since you're here, uh, we'd like to ask you to please share and Retweet the space and invite some more folks in and 
uh, join us in the conversation. So, Jim O'Reary, how are you today? I'm wonderful. Good afternoon. Um, I was a little unplugged this weekend with politics because we had a family wedding about an hour and a half away from where I live in Illinois. Um, today is Indigenous Days uh, for, people, for Indigenous Peoples Day. We have to normalize that. We have to, the, no, Columbus did not discover America. Columbus was a heathen. He was vile. He was a liar. He was a thief. And we don't need to acknowledge that. That is uh, just, it, it sickens me to this day that we still have this fake holiday for this man. Um, one of the most beautiful things about indigenous people is that they never took more than what they ever needed. They always gave praise and prayer to the land, to the planet, and they took care of the land and planet. They were grateful. Um, we could kill one buffalo and feed the whole tribe instead of being like the white man who wanted to kill 50 buffalo and waste it. There was nothing wasted from indigenous people. Um, us European people could have learned a lot from them had we not been so vile and greedy. Um, also, Mercer, I, I was so glad you brought that up, Dee. The Mercer money, the, the gold money is bad, but the Mercer money in particular. If we remember, Ted Cruz was running against Trump and Rubio and whatever 20 other idiots the GOP put up there for their primary. The Mercer's despised Trump. Kellyanne Conway was Ted Cruz's campaign manager. When Ted Cruz dropped out, Kellyanne Conway started a pack against Trump with Mercer money. Kaylee McInerney, that idiot girl from CNN, she didn't like Trump either. But then what we saw happen is the Mercer's then met with their GOP big money donors, Mitch McConnell, all those leaders, and they then went to support Trump. Kellyanne Conway was brought on, also Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon, who has had this whole white supremacy thing going through Breitbart for how long, those, that money brought those people on. And these people said, oh, we can't stand him. When it comes to my white people and Republicans, they will, they will put anybody. They could tell you, I hate you. But if everybody else is for that person, somehow they come around and go, okay, we'll support him. So let's remember that about these people and how wicked they really are. I'm going to go a little bit off tune really quick here because I really want to give a shout out to Willow Smith. And the reason why is I think that that young woman is amazing. I think with everything that that family has been through, I've been married for over two decades. Marriage is not easy. Uh, marriage is work. And uh, nobody wants their marriage printed out loud. Um, trust me, we've had our problems, my husband and I. But the difference is we work together as a team. But let me say this about the Smiths. Uh, they have phenomenal children, and I think they've done a great job raising their kids. And I got to say, I thought Willow Smith did a phenomenal performance on Saturday Night Live this weekend. And the fact that she shaves her head, I love that. I wish more women would empower themselves. Hair is hair. It can grow. It cannot grow. But you're still beautiful whether you have it or not. So we just wanted to throw that in. We have uh, less than 30 days here. Um, everybody grab somebody, you know, let's not forget about the people my age in their forties, fifties, sixties, who have never voted. If you know somebody like that, especially my white people, grab them, help them register to vote and get them to go vote in this extremely important election in November. And with that, I will sit back and listen. Well, thank you so much. I did not. I have been unplugged a bit from social media and 
um, some other things as well. So I'll have to go back and check out the Saturday Night Live. I did not even know that she was on there, but I think she's a pretty phenomenal um, young lady as well. And um, yeah, I um, the Mercers and, and all of these people who are involved in the dark money that's shaping our politics. It it is a geopolitical um, underpinning. And we need to, again, like not take our eyes off of that because that's how we begin to undo some of this is by recognizing who's behind it and, and how they're doing it. So Jay has come up to join us in conversation. So glad to have you here today, Jay. How are you and what's on your mind today? Uh, good, Misty. Thank you. Good uh, morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, uh, just I know Alexi is not in Russia. Just make sure he's all right because uh, Putin's going crazy over there, man. It's, it's super scary what he's doing uh, to the women of Iran. More power to you. Super dope. And it's nice to see uh, women show solidarity with them worldwide. Uh, cutting their hair and stuff like that. That's that's a crazy situation. And, of course, here, you know, Tuberville and Kanye West, they are who they are. Uh, Tuberville made a fortune going to the homes of black people and recruiting their sons. And now all of a sudden, you know, he said what he said. So they are what they are. Um, to my black people in Georgia, do not listen to Killer Mike uh, and all of them famous jo uh, black Georgians. Uh, you know, it's their responsibility too. They're, they're saying she ain't going into uh, reaching black men. Well, how about you reach black men? Because if Kemp, if Kemp stays governor of Georgia, he's literally going to take away your voting rights and whatever rights you have there. And, you know, he's not going to uh, take do away with marijuana arrests. He's not going to do away with anything. So if you're mad at Stacey Abrams for not going into the black community, well, how about you go into the black community and help push her message? Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate you. And yeah, Eugene and I talked a little bit about Tuberville um, this morning. And it's... Um, Kind of like, yeah, we, we know he's a racist or whatever, but but understand like how he connected these two things um, will help to, uh, you to understand how he's using his racism. Because, you know, first off, he's just uh, flatly um, attributing the problems to crime to black people. And then he brings in reparations. Well, nobody I know. Um, in my black community is talking about reparations to that degree. You know who are? They are ops, you know, and they are keeping that conversation going for a reason for one of them is for Tupperville and others to use it in just this manner. They are such a small, um, extreme part of our black community and for him to tie that in um, to crime, which he ties directly to that black people tells me that these people are, like you said, and killer Mike, the uncle Luke's they are absolutely ops, you know, and, and they have been unleashed in their own communities, which makes it even more disgusting. But thank you so much for bringing that up. And um, I brought um, Tiff up and so glad to have her here today and looking forward to having her share with us. So go ahead, Tiff, you have the floor. Hey, Dee and Eugene. Um, hope everyone's having a good day. Um, it's Monday, so happy Monday. We made it through the weekend. Nice weekend for me, but um, I was able to see my nephew, so that's always good. What a cutie. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, all that red hair, right? <laughs> so he's like, it's like insane. My sister, does, my sister, when she was little, she she did have red hair, but then it like got darker. And his dad and his um his aunt, his other aunt have like super red hair too. So he, but his is like way brighter than theirs, so 
he is he is too much. He's he makes me laugh. So it was nice to be able to see him. Um, I'll get to see him again on Tuesday because we're all heading down to Florida, um, just to be with my family. Obviously, I told you guys my aunt died last week, so we'll be I'll be gone most of the week. Um, just in case anyone's looking for me, I will not be around. <laughs> But um, we'll so, miss you, but our hearts well, are with you, you and thank your you, family. Dee. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably be, I'll be back. I'll be gone Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday. So I probably won't be on at all or maybe just briefly. So if anything comes up, just DM me guys. Um, I'll check it in the evening. Um, but otherwise, I just wanted to talk. There was lots of things that happened this weekend, Lord. Okay, so let me start with, um, I don't even want to talk about Kanye because he's just so stupid. Um, I just think he's absurd at this point and there's not, and bigotry is just not acceptable. So I felt like it was like bigot weekend and we had, you know, him with his, his anti-Semitism. And then we had the lady from LA with her anti-blackness. So it was like, I just called bigot weekend, um, where people are just exposing themselves for their bigotry. And I don't care if you have mental health issues. I don't care if you're mad at somebody, there is no reason for you to to spew that kind of bigotry and call people, you know, any kind of names. It is unacceptable. I don't care who you are. Um, I don't care if you're famous. I don't care if you have money. I don't care if you're broke. You should not be saying things like that. Just people need to just shut up. Um, I did post a video um, about anti-blackness in the Latino community. Um, just you guys, just because I know this this comes up frequently. And so, you know, obviously I am Afro Latino and I, you know, I have experienced it in my own community. Right. So people have told me stuff all my life um, about myself. Right. They I'm either too I'm either too um, I'm, I'm not um, Latino enough. Right. Or, <laughs> or there's always something. Right. Or I'm too I'm too dark. I'm too this. I'm too that. Like my hair, my this, I, I've heard it all my life. So um, does it does it make it right? Hell no, because it should not be said. The things that people say are ridiculous. And yes, there is, there is, there is, it is a learned thing that people have learned through years and years and years of colonization and they are continuing it. So people learn this stuff from their parents. And I have vowed to break this cycle in my own family where I will not allow people to say these things in my company and when they do they will get cursed out so um you know it is something that I have made kind of my mission I don't really talk about it on here as much um as I used to on my Instagram because that's where I speak to my family um and and on Facebook but I just think it's ridiculous um to call some you know especially a child that was a that was a baby a two-year-old saying you're gonna fight a kid and I don't even understand how it all even got started it just seemed something about a parade and they were holding the baby. And I'm like, OK, so you're mad about this and you're going to you're going to turn around and call, you know, the baby, you know, a, a nasty name. I don't want to repeat it, but you're just it's just ridiculous at this point. So I saw that she resigned from being the the president of the, the city council. She needs to resign, period. Like there's 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 no reconciling, in my opinion, with with any of that language like you need to just go and you need to go far away from being in politics and so are the other people that were having those conversations with her because at some point somebody should have told her what the f are you doing what are you even saying and no one did so i am literally sick of people you know just talking bad about black folks about jews um, and, the, and it goes the reverse way as well, right? People shouldn't say things that are anti, you know, anti-Hispanic or anti-immigrant or anything like that. We we need to really stop the bigotry. We People want to divide us on purpose. They w- they don't want us to build a bigger coalition. They want to they wanna see us divided. It only helps white supremacy. So you going and saying something negative about, you know, whether you're black, you're white, you're Latino, whatever, you're saying something about another ethnic group you're not really helping, you're not helping move the conversation along. You're just adding towards the bigotry and the stereotypes and prejudices that we that we all have about each other. And we're all guilty of it. Every last person in here has some kind of bias or has some kind of, um, you know, prejudice towards another group. Is sometimes sometimes it's warranted, you know. Sometimes sometimes you 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 have those things because of things that people have done to you. 
Um, it doesn't make it right, but you know, you do have them. So I think we all can do, we can all kind of check our own, um, our own prejudices and see where we can improve. Cause sometimes my sister tells me, you know, her husband is white and I'll say, and I'll say something. And she's like, she just gives me the look and I'm like, yeah, you're right. So, you know, I have to check myself too, to not say things that, you know, that, are, that are stereotypes, you know, can't dance, this, that, whatever, you know, like, just, you have no rhythm. Like these are like, they're not, they're not harmful things, but we still, we still do say them. So I think we just need to also check that as well. Um, the only other thing I wanted to speak about was about, um, I just, I just posted it, a poll from from Wisconsin. So Manzella Barnes had a really good debate. I had live tweeted it on Friday. He had a really good debate. looks like he's one point behind Ron Johnson. So he's still in the race. So don't count him out. If he can get his shit together, we can possibly win that seed. I just, it's really going to come out based on the poll. It looks like it's really going to come down to turnout and it's going to be a really, really close selection for him and Tony Everest. So don't give up on him. I know it's hard. He's kind of to the to, to the way to the left of many of us, but he still does have an opportunity to win. So hopefully he can get his act together. We can continue to support him. And then it looks like tonight is Tim Ryan's um, debate with J.D. Vance at 7 p.m. Eastern. So I'm excited for that. I'll probably live tweet that because I love debates. And of course, Friday, you know, we have the the Warnock and <laughs> and Walker debate, which we'll see if Walker actually shows up. I have no idea if he will. I think he, I think there should be a debate regardless because there's a lot to talk about there. So that's my update for today. I hope everyone has a good day and I'll stay up. I don't have much going on, so I can stay up if anyone has any questions or if you want me to chime in on anything. Awesome. I do have a question and a uh, kind of a question and a request <laughs> uh, of you. Um, I was in um, Danny's space yesterday on the fourth estate and it, it's a great space guys. So I'm going to try to get that, put it up in the jumbotron so you guys can, you know, listen to it or Danny, I think she's here. She can put it in the thread, but she was um, covering the, um, Republican governor races. And a lot of people, of course, are aware of Abbott and DeSantis, but Danny was digging into a few others that don't get a lot of coverage, like my state here, Tennessee. Our governor is up for re-election. And she asked me a question, and I'm sad to say, but, you know, just kind of honest about it, because that's not where my interest or, you know, you know, skill sets lie. You know, what I thought... Um, Jason, Dr. Jason Martin, who is running against Governor Bill Lee, what his chances were. Um, I, I can only gauge it from enthusiasm, you know, and we, we've talked about, you know, that being, you know, a good indicator as well. But he does like some name recognition, but he's doing the things like this weekend. Um, he was at the uh, Tennessee Homecoming Parade and was very well received. And um, that is an HBCU. And people, you know, um, love that school and that event. And so I was just wondering if you had or could access any, you know, kind of statistical information around his chances um you know in the race because you know uh, lee also he he had no name recognition when he ran he he was just a businessman um and of course we have like a large uh, super majority gop here and you know they were busy doing their their voter suppression and rigging and certainly they've done a lot more since then but I was just wondering if you knew anything or if you could find something out for me, for us in that area. Yep, I'll look. I, I don't know if there's any polling because Danny had asked me um, about it before, but I don't remember if I was able to find polling. I know the other race she was looking at was easier, but I don't know if they've even polled that race, which is weird, right? Because it, it should be some kind of polling. So I'm going to look for you, D. I'll come back and let you know what I find. I appreciate it because that's, that's me too. I was trying to search, um, but, um, you know, just kind of general. And like I said, that's kind of not my thing. And I just couldn't find enough information on it. And, you know, all of the 
conversations that I've had with uh, those associated with uh, Dr. Martin's team feel very good um, about it. And I just kind of think it's it's like a ground game thing and, and recognition. I do know that here locally, um, you know, when I have my local channels on, I have not yet seen any of his commercials. Now, I don't watch a lot of local TV, but I have seen Lee's and, you know, it's a good commercial, um, but it's totally lies. It's, you know, the typical GOP and, and here, of course, being the buckle of the Bible Belt, it's all about family values and, you know, how Tennessee is growing. And and it is. And, and a lot of industry and things have been brought here. But, you know, the part that is not in that commercial is how he's actively destroying the education system here and taking funds away from, you know, public schools and those types of things. Anyway, I don't want to go on. Yeah, too long. I see. It looks like the that they it looks like they have and predictive prediction wise they have Lee very likely to win, um, but there is no polling, which is just odd. So I don't know if people are just not paying for polling because they know they think that it's that Lee is going to win, so they're like we're going to spend our resources otherwise. But it's it's weird that there is no polling. So hopefully he's making Martin is making some inroads. Um, but you know, it's hard, really hard to tell without any polling to determine that. Like you said, enthusiasm is, is, is one thing and it, you know, enthusiasm in one part of the state is not the same as enthusiasm in other parts of the state. So it's kind of hard to really, to really gauge that, but, um, exactly. some polling would be nice. <laughs> some mm-hmm. polling would be nice. Yeah. So thank you for, you know, confirming that because I, I did try to, you know, several times try to find some indication of that and, and never could. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. I want to get to a few other hands and glad you can stick around with us today. Uh, I've got Carmen and then AKA up. Glad to have you guys joining us today. So Carmen, Hi, you're Dee. up next. Hi. Hello, Dee. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Yourself? Hi. I just wanted to chime in on with what Tiff was saying. Oh my gosh, she's so right that it was bigot week. <laughs> I mean, in a space that, you know, there were folks talking about anti immigration and all of that. And I know I'm not an immigrant, I know that. But, you know, <laughs> the United States, we always were welcoming, you know folks to come here and it and and the thing is that the folks that come here they're seeking you know aside they're they're asylum seekers so all this rhetoric about you know immigrants and the ukraine and and then this other spanish person in california just saying some racist stuff you know so oh my gosh it 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 was bigot week i I hope (laughs) I hope we have a better week, okay? <laughs> Cause the weekend, oh my gosh, it, it was it was just a lot. And you know, I'm Puerto Rican, and I even had to do my own history and and where you know where I come from, what our island is composed of. Even though you know some Puerto Ricans think they're white, but you know I have to let them know you got to go back to your history, y'all. <laughs> But anyway, I digress. I just wanted to chime in. And yeah, I, I was listening into some other spaces and, and it was really like anti, you know, anti this, anti that. I was like, oh, my gosh, can't can't we just get along? Right, Dee? <laughs> exactly. Well, what kind of space was it? I mean, was it like a MAGA space or was it? No, just, it was the it, space we were in, it, you know, with a whole it, bunch of reparations and blah, 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 blah. It's the same space me and Tiff was in. Believe me, me, I was in there. Tip was in it there. was Uncle Lou's oh. face. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. It was like a bomb for that real. Is, like, those yeah. people are lost. I mean, they're they, lost. They, they don't yeah. want to, you know. And D got it. You know, um, is it D? Uh, you know, D, the one that has a space, and he the got bomb. into it because they don't like to read. They don't want to educate your, themselves. It's just a lot, you know. It's yeah, a lot. well, they're doing. You know, the 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 purpose they just is and, and, and it's really, it's really ca- sad because chaos get is the purpose. Down. Yeah, chaos is the purpose. It is right. not even though he pretends that he wants to inform or have informative conversation. That is not the purpose. And this again, like I said, the, these people are truly they are um, ops. And I really, really hope that you guys check out Heidi's. Um, 
article and she even in that thread that I posted, she breaks it down because this goes way back and it's very intentional. And Mike Flynn is brought up in it because he is a very integral part. Um, and, and and it goes back some, some decades, even with uh, Iran um, Contra, uh, that issue there. Oh, yeah. And they have just gotten better. Like mm-hmm. these people have so much expertise in how to run ops in other countries or to observe ops that are being ran. And I'm telling you that we have a op being ran on us here in the United States and those characters over there in that space are part of it. And um, it's designed to- I agree, to... Dee. I agree. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like a populist, um, you know, that whole populist mentality, you know, we're going to complain about this and complain about that, but we're not going to vote until we get this and that. Now, President Biden has gotten a lot of stuff done, and I don't think he's never, ever going to get credit for it. And it's a dagger. Right, shirt. because it's, you that know, another, is another then, key, Carmen, then the alpha male the- was pretty much, oh, what about the black man? And I just, I don't get it. I mean, because it's, it's not, not even a- that important to have black women and, and and like the vice president and so many black women that President Biden has even, I mean, look at the, the, the Supreme Court. And I just, I don't get it, but that's okay. No, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm not going to let I mean, it, I think you, know. you do get it because the thing of it is, is whatever they're talking about, whether it's reparations, whether it's deliverables or whatever, you notice that every time he does something to address their issue, um, they move on to something else because it's not about those issues. Those issues are just uh, tools that they are using to create the chaos and to, um, you know, disenfranchise voters and, you know, to, you know, get them um, kind of bought into their apathy and, and this thing about, you know, neither one of the parties does anything for us or cares about us. I mean, that's that's the whole purpose, you know, and they just use different, uh, you know, different issues to to try to highlight that. But, you know, once those issues are addressed, they move on to something else because it's not about that. Like with Stacy, right. you know, they talk right. about her not talking to black men. I mean, right. she's, she's Killer having conversations. Killer Mike, she, yeah. Mm-hmm. She's I having know. conversations with them. She has an agenda. And instead of like bringing people uh, together, he's like mm-hmm. dividing people there. Mm-hmm. And, you know? and she actually has a printed agenda, but, you know, right. that's right. not getting talked about or right. shown. And, and when, when that is brought up, they just ignore it. You, you know, when people don't want to see what's in front of them, they know that their intent is not honest either. You know, they, you know, you know, they're, they're just not being honest. It's a whole, the, the whole conversation is disingenuous. And, you know, some of those people are engaged in it, you know, maybe unwittingly they're being scooped uh, up by it because that's kind of the way propaganda happens. I mean, some people, you know, they create it, they know the purpose, they know the truth, but they create it. And then other people get sucked up into it and they, they truly believe it. And, and they, you know, take on the cause and, and all the false thinking and stuff, it, you know, kind of a brainwashing. And that's how I see those guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. They see, that's what they do. They get your blood pressure up, don't they? And that's why I can't deal with them. <laughs> it's, it's like, mm, mm, mm. like, I see you. I see what you're doing. And it's so infuriating. <laughs> but thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Tiff, for going. I mean, we do need people to keep an eye on these guys. <laughs> and I say, you know, guys, you know, in general, I'm glad that you guys go over and check them out and see what's going on. So we understand what we're dealing with. So we can, you know, find some ways to combat some of it, but Jesus, I just can't. <laughs> but thank you for doing it. Did you have anything else you wanted to add, Carmen? Okay. I'm going to go to AKA and then Marco. Just just the racist rhetoric is getting out of hand with Kanye West and everybody mm-hmm. else. So that's all. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not even about, you know, like 
they're being used too. That's the most disgusting right, thing. And right. and I feel like the big name ones like the the Kanye, the Luke's, the <laughs> Killer Mikes, I feel like they're being paid <laughs> in some way. You never know because it's all about, you know, <laughs> like whether <laughs> it's capitalists. Like a they they just care about money, money, money. Let's make money. <laughs> right, right. And right. like I they're said, not, whether... they're not caring about the communities, I don't think, you know. No, just their own purses. Right. You know? And that, again, right. like I said, makes it even more disgusting because they're willing to let their entire community, which they supposedly care for, especially Mike, he does a lot of things. You know, you're willing to subject them to harm by someone and promote someone that, you know, you know, um, is not um, promoting things that are beneficial to them. That's right. just, you know. It's sad. sad. It well, is. I digress. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, and I may come back later. I got to continue working here. <laughs> oh, that's fine. No, you, you're not digressing. It's, it's right on topic. And It you know. is. It is. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, How thank about, you. I'll try to come back. <laughs> All right, then. Well, we'd love to have you. Okay. So up next, we've got AKA and then Marco. And I see Cheesy in the house. How are you today? I don't know if you're working, but I'm going to send you an invite if you are uh, feeling like joining the conversation, then please do. So, AKA, you're up next, and then Marco. Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. I, right. I, I'm mm-hmm. in the LA area. So, this this whole blow up is hitting hot and heavy here. Um, it is, um, I was out at a fundraiser for someone running for school board and they kind of said a little bit about it. I didn't get a chance to, to like really read and then listen till late yesterday. Um, and it, it was the thing that struck me about it and going through the detail is when uh, Nuri Martinez says that this kid deserves a beat down. I mean, that you have to remember, the one thing that many of you may not know is that she was on the Los Angeles Unified School District School Board. So can you imagine someone on a school board saying that about like a two or three year old child? You know, you know that those children at that age particularly little boys, are rambunctious. They don't sit still for nobody. I don't care whether they're black, they're blue, they're orange, they're purple, they're white, they're green, whatever. Little boys at that age generally, you know, tend to bounce and move around a lot. So I, I just don't get it. And why would you fault a, there are a couple who happen to be white, who a adopted or you know have a black child what is why would you not want them to bring that black child to a Martin Luther King Day event I mean everybody should be bringing their children to an MLK Day event and explaining the relevance and the history and hopefully going beat more beyond you know I have a dream but at that young age you can start at I have a dream so you know the fact that they weaponized that and that she, um, like I said, a school board, a former school board member had the audacity to not say discipline, spank, but a beat down for a young child at that age who was just doing what typical young children do was just horrifying to me, horrifying. And then, you know, we can get into the, all the other political stuff, you know, about, because, you know, the redistricting in this area was hell. Um, and it was just kind of crazy and the turf wars and the turf battles and it gets ugly. And you saw some of that, if you read it and you listen to the thread, you see some of that ugliness that comes out. But, um, you know, that being said, I was also at a political event on Saturday where the labor union gentleman was at. And it was interesting because I did not, I, his face looked familiar, but I didn't know who he was. And so there were a lot, some of us who 
um, you know, were trying to pose for a picture. There were a lot of members of uh, the Divine Nine who were there, of which I'm, you know, a member of a, of, a, of a sorority. And there were a lot of members of the Divine Nine who were there and supporting this event, which was to raise funds for four Black women who are running in the Los Angeles area. So for Karen Bass as LA mayor, for Sydney L- Kamlager, who is going to running to take Karen Bass's seat in the U.S. Congress, then for Lola Smallwood Cueva, who is running to take Sydney's seat in the California Senate, and for Tina McKenna, who is just um, one election as a California assembly member who for a special election and has to run again. So, you know, we are attempting to really make sure that there's a pipeline of black women, you know, that idea of don't just get to the top, but make sure, you know, you pull people along. There is only one black woman in the California state Senate one. I think there are of the California Assembly, uh, it, it's some out of, I think, I, I forget the number, but it's not that many Black women who are in the California Assembly either. And as you know, in Congress, you know, some representation, but not a huge number in Congress because even all women are underrepresented in Congress still to this day, women of color in particular. And at, at a, and LA has never had a woman mayor, much less a black woman mayor. So we are trying to do that heavy lift. And this guy barges into this picture and he's just there and he's trying to horn his way in a Herrera. And I'm like, there's something about this guy's energy that I just don't like. And then when this whole thing broke on Sunday and I'm like, that's what it was. Because, you know, you can recognize when the energy ain't right. And, you know, all I got to say is um, I, I, I want to see what happens. But, yes, I, I will put on my comfy shoes and go to a city hall protest. If, if um, Gil Cedillo... Um, he luckily he lost in the primary so there is a young uh latina woman who is taking his place on the city council she's very cool she comes to you know events with with with, um you know uh i will say the, the black women's democratic club all the time so i think you know i've never gotten a sense that she is not an ally okay I've heard things about Nuri Martinez a lot. A lot of people say she's not the ally you think she is. And now I guess we see that's true. So I'm really hoping that if they don't do the right thing, that there's some real protest and action to get them out of office. Because Kevin DeLeon needs to go. And Nuri Martinez needs to go. I'm okay to let Gil have his last two months in office. But bye, don't ask us for our support again, period, end of the discussion. And ditto for Ms. Martinez and Mr. DeLeon. That's all I got to say. Well, thank you. And thank you for the work that you're doing on the ground there to help support those great candidates. And, um, you know, um, they're all... um, good candidates and Karen Bass. I certainly hope that um, she is able to have a win. I'm not familiar with the, the other candidate who is um, taking, Uh, um, who's uh, taking her seat. Um, But thank you so much, uh, AKA for coming up and uh, letting us know and letting us know that, you know, you're going to get involved on the ground there if you need to, um, to um, make sure that these people, you know, elected officials are are held to account. So thank you uh, for 
having that spirit. And I think that's like many in here, but I love to, to hear about it from a local perspective. So thank you so much. Up next, we've got Marco. What you got going on there, Marco? And then uh, Jeezy. <laughs> Nothing much. I'm at home chilling, you know. Um, I'm off from work today. So just sitting back and listening to the peeps on you, you know, on Democracy First, you know, my favorite radio station, you know. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I just put out a tweet because the conversations um, – on Luke's uh, spaces yesterday reminded me of something. So I put out a tweet, you know, about a, a with a dog chasing an eagle off a, off a cliff. So the dog, you know, jumps off the cliff to catch the eagle, but the eagle can fly, but a dog can't. And it says, and it says uh, things done in anger cannot be undone, you know? So that, that dog is going to fall to his death. Holler Eagle just flies away. So, you know, that that's what it re, all of that talk reminds me of. You when you say you're not gonna vote, <laughs> it's like who do you think you're hurting? You know, you only hurting yourself, you know, not anyone else. You're not gonna hurt the Democratic Party. You're not gonna hurt, you know, it, the only thing you're gonna do is put poor um black people and elderly people in a bad position. And possibly your children if they don't have health care. So that's all I want to say. Well, thank you so much for that. And and look at this. I mean, uh, we have been talking in different spaces often on about um, the um, change and, and shift and uprising going on in Iran. And people need to understand that there are these young women who are walking around like that now are walking around um, under a um, rule of government that is so much more restricted than that of their grandmothers. Like there are pictures of these young ladies who are being forced to wear the hijab and, and the modest dress and all of that, that they have of their grandmothers who l looked um, like... Um, for their time in in the seventies or whatever, like um, any other um, American um, young people, young women, and this is how I I bring that up because it's like this is how things can change, and people need to understand um, that they have things have changed like that in in other countries, and I think that is. Um, one of the other things that we have on have going on here is kind of that failure of imagination and um, some people that may be, you know, apathetic or just not, you know, involved in politics. And that's those are the ones that like really I feel like we, you know, can shake and, and, and wake up. You know, but those over there drinking that Kool-Aid that Luke is pouring, I, I feel like they're already drunk and done. It's a shame. But so I, I just want to say that I, you know, I, I like, I follow like trends and stuff that that are happening. And I gotta say, I have seen like a huge amount of racial ad pointed at ra racism on one side and the other, like both sides hitting this. Like, and I've also seen in the troll replies, there's a very canned way that these, that these bots reply. And I'm seeing that rise, rise more. And this is like, this is a, this is an issue that affect, like, this is a real issue in America. D and I were talking about this this morning. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine with a very large account um, after Biden won. And, you know, what am I going to focus on? And like, you know, had I known the road, I, I'd probably still done it, but I'd been a little more careful was my, I just thought that racism was, it was absolutely an issue in this country that, that this country does not understand because we refuse to uh, uh, teach history in this country. I mean, Sarah Silverman's remark this weekend, just the tone deafness of it, it was a clear example of that. You know, um, I, I'm not going to say that she's a racist person, but I can absolutely say that she, she absolutely does not understand black America in this country. And if you don't understand 
that part of this country. You sure don't understand my part of indigenous. You don't understand, you know, Asians part of, of America. And this, these are all large portions of America that, you know, you put it in the melting pot and it matters, right? These things matter. Um, anyways, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bust in on you on that D, but I just, I, I, I thought that like, you know, the, this is going, to, they're going to really drive this. And in these spaces, especially, you know, I, I want to point back to something that I saw early on that so, somebody pointed out to me in the, uh, when I was looking at this Ukraine, uh, Russia war that's happening right now. And that was this video on YouTube. Um, you can Google it, but the, these are Russian operatives. And the first one I saw, I mean, this girl was straight up out of California. The other guy, I think he was like out of New Jersey. I mean, these were like, and then it pulls back and they're in a studio in Russia, right? And they're like hanging out, smoking cigarettes, talking in Russian. You know, it, you just like, you don't know who's in these spaces. And when they're driving narratives like, like, like are just bad for America, you got to assume this is not a friend of America, no matter what they sound or what they do. Some of these we know. You know, and I, I, I got to assume same thing. There, there is something behind them that would cause them to say something that is absolutely destructive for their own families, right? Like you start talking about, I'm, I'm not going to vote and just let this thing continue to happen. Well, that isn't, you, you know, if you, you're, if you're from Black America, Indigenous America, or wherever you're from. You're, that's not just you that it, this is affecting, idiot. This is your entire family and all your relatives that this is affecting. So why would you say that? It only The only thing that drives somebody saying something like that is their desire for power or money. That's the only thing. Why Why would you say something that hurt, that is going to hurt you and yours? It's only for power and money. And so I've got to assume that, you know, some of this behind this power and money, it's just people that don't like us. Right. I, I, I you know, wh why would why would Koch brothers fund this? Why would why would the Mercers fund stuff like this? You got to consider why they would do do this. They don't want us to be a free and open, fair election democracy. That's why. Why is that? I mean, you, we got to start asking these questions in America. What's behind you? Why? Why are you driven this way? Do you, are you a friend of this country? I, I think that this, this this thing of like pushing this treason thing has just been pushed and pushed and pushed. You know, with you know, they started marching in our streets. You know, at state capitals, and and they didn't come for them. So now now they go to our capital of the United States and attack it. And that didn't work. So they, they okay. So the, man, they listen to the stuff that they're saying. These things have not been said in America on a public stage in a very, very long time. And when they were, there was always controversy around them and a large outcry. There, there is something happening in this country that people think it's okay to come out and just say straight up Nazi, racist, bigoted things on a public stage on on a mass scale like they're doing i mean i was telling d this morning sometimes you know we would hear king or whatever and you know we'd be you know republicans yeah that's king you know uh, uh senator king but i mean this is coming from multitudes of them at a large at a very fast pace and i just i i think that you know there's a blitz happening and when i when i hear you know uh, animals cry in pain. That's what this is. What it sounds like to me. Anyways, I, I think that we have a really good chance in this election, and you know, I, I'm glad that there are those of you that are watching polls and paying attention to particular races because um, it keep, helps me stay updated and it gives me encouragement because I, I I think that you know, despite what you hear in that poll, when I I just want to see close, right? Like because we don't know one way or the other, but you know. I, I just think that these issues in this outright, you know, they've went all in. They've said, you know, either either ours likes us for exactly what we are, fascists that, you know, uh, want to change what that constitution says and how we govern, you know, or are we the America that we all love and, and, and fought for? I, I think, yeah, that's all I got, Dee. Sorry. Okay, well, we've got Jeezy, then uh, Miss K, uh, Miss uh, K, and uh, then Marco. You had your hand up, so I'll come back to you. So, Jeezy, how are you this morning? And then Miss K. 
Hey, how are you guys? Not too bad. I'm doing really great. So let's go and back up. Let's go back on the fact about Kanye and what does Kanye is connected by. So to me, this whole entire week has been last week was like on fire on Twitter. I think there was the implosion of um her Walker campaign, and we start seeing the problematic people who is coming in the coming out of the woodwork and try to derail our democracy and. This is where Kanye fits in the brand. I think everything has been happening has been coordinated because this is what the Republican Party is doing. It started with um, Stacey Abrams. If you look at how black men was not voting for her and with this narrative that they were pushing for the past couple of weeks that led to this implosion with Kanye and White Lives Matter in Paris. So I want everybody to realize this is organ- organized chaos with the, F- the FBAs as well as um, all the Ashley Hoteps who are talking about vilifying and talking about reparations, which we have a person of interest named Marcel, Marcel who's been infiltrated and went out of state knowing that he is from South Carolina, as everybody knows, what the hell he was doing in, in Georgia over the weekend? Trying An to op. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What are you talking about reparations if you're not going to... In, in, where is that same exact energy for um Tim Scott, a black, a black senator from South Carolina, and where's the same energy for Lindsey Graham? We was that energy, all that energy and all that smoke, and he is nowhere to be found with that thing. He never answered my question. He's a fear. You know what? If certain people knows me on Twitter, and I don't know that I I kind of intimidate people, and I don't understand why that he haven't not answered my question. I really was curious why he has not answered that question and why he has not open to say anything to me at all. I know what he is. But anyways, so anywho, so <laughs> so speaking of where Kanye matter is, why does it connect it to Kanye? Kanye has been Kanye has been attached to the Republican Party ever since Donald Trump was elected. Okay guys? He's been attached to them as an outlet to divide the black vote or try to skim votes from our community for years. He has been in a coordinated plot with Jared Kushner. So there's a lot of evidence throughout the years. My Twitter feed has been on his case for a long time. And you have to ask yourself the question, what does Kanye has involved? Kanye has an involvement in January 6th. One of his publicists was the one who harassed Rudy, um, Lady Ruby Freeman and her daughter in Georgia. In Georgia. Mm-hmm. So this is connected. So if we talk about Killer Mike and it's saying that how Killer Mike is how, he, how he's undermining Stacey Abrams, Stacey Abrams, let's really do the connection. Killer Mike has been a um, is also alleged op because of legal reasons. I have to say that. So, and he's a Bernie bro. Exactly, Bernie bros is is secret Republicans because that's what they are. They are nothing but Republicans. They despise black people. I will tell. I will. I would say one. worse than that. I would say that they're more closely aligned with mega. And Trumpism. No, 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 no. I no. They are. They are. They just want. They. They are. They are on the sides of the same coin. That's where I have to say. I know who they are. I dealt with them. I know who they are. They dealt with me, and they. They are. They don't like me, and and I don't like them either. I know them from years. They. They are offset from living in Beer Bro in Brooklyn and New York. They targeted, they targeted and harassed me for numerous years, 
y'all only saw them in action actually when they was when Bernie was was running for president. That's when y'all fully got the full experience of who they are. But I always knew who they were because they always been trolls. But back again, just to say, reiterate about everything that's what happened. Everything is all connected. Kanye, um, the reparations, the, about everything about the coordinated attacks against black pro- politicians by problematic people on this app. It's all coordinated by the same level, the same people. And I want people to be mindful and be mindset that this is a, going to be, it's going to get even more worse than better. Because they're going to be more desperate. They're going to be more maligning the Democrats. They're going to be chastising the Democrats. And you got to know when to pick your battles or really stand your ground and say, enough is enough. Let's cut the shit to the side. People turn around and say, well, we should mute Kanye. No. The thing is, Kanye has been getting away with crap for years. There's a lot of, it's time, it's like, I don't want to see anybody say, I had enough of him and everything like that. No. Kanye has inserted himself in our political process. So in other words, you're saying it's time for full on dragging. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. And I really, I really am tired of people and people and naysayers in our timeline telling us, oh, no, let's keep it. Let's mute him. Shut no, up. you have to you have to call these things out, and I don't like. I said <laughs> I may up. not I may not be calling everything out, but what I do like to do is to connect the dots mm-hmm. on on their behavior. So yeah, keep doing what you're doing. People need to know, um, mm-hmm. and especially pe- people in our community, you know, like exactly, our, our, exactly. our black just... community, because you have a voice. You connect with that, and some of um, those people in our communities are not engaged politically enough, and you know, like they they may just see him as doing acting out, doing some crazy stuff. Exactly. But you need to make them aware of how his acting, how dangerous his acting out is, and like like I don't think he's. I'm not saying he doesn't have mental health issues, but I think he is actually capitalizing off of his mental health. No, issues. He's, he's capitalizing it. Who will fly out? Let me tell you something about this this BS about White Lives Matter and why he flew out Candace Owens. Why would you pull, fly out a problematic person who has no relevance, no connection to our community? She has been lying us. She has been throwing us, put us under the bus for a quick buck. Let's not remember that she, as a young woman, a young girl in high school, she faced uh, in discrimination in Ca- um, in Connecticut, and she won a lawsuit because she was racially a targeted. And for her to come out and drag us for being a opportunist and a grifter off the backs of our uh, our pain and our legacy. To go, she can go f herself. So, um, just to say where we at right now as a community is this: we need to call each and every individual out. And to me, we need to speak truth to power. I don't care when people say, "Oh, you need to stop retreating and stop showing Kristen Walker." You have to stop. No, we're at twenty-eight days to our democracy. We need to get the vote out. If we could suppress their side of voting, of not voting for scummy people, that is fine. But we just need to suppress that vote and increase our turnout from our side, and we can win. And I don't want to see that, because if you tweet that nonsense in my timeline, I'm going to curse you out. (laughs) Because I really am. I'm going to curse you right out. Because the so, line so you're giving us a warning now? Yeah, I am. Because the thing is, the thing Wait, is, what will I get in trouble for tweeting? No, no, it's like this. Don't no, tell what, anybody. I'm asking what it is that I'll get in trouble for. I because I, I I tend to get in trouble, so I need to. No, it's just like this. Um, don't tone, don't tone, don't tone, police me. I know what I'm doing. 
You is and <laughs> yeah, I don't want to no, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so I'm gonna land my plane right there. I know I'm I'm know I'm hot and bothered and like him because then you know what he did over the weekend with the Jewish community was despicable. Even I didn't want to say anything for all the people who turn around what Kanye said as a tweet. He needs to be banned off his social media completely. I think that was disgusting. It was appalling. And it shouldn't be gone to that level. We have been warning, warning the black community, including myself, been warning everyone for years. It's the same lesson where with Donald Trump. Black people have been warning you about Donald Trump for years. For years, and no one don't seem to listen, or I never want to acknowledge the fact that we are the messengers who will tell telling you, "Yo, you in danger." And when you were like, and y'all don't want to take no, take no, take no responsibility of not heeding the warnings. You have people like Sarah Silverman say, "Oh, why y'all so deafening and why y'all so silent?" I was like, really. Who are you talking to specifically? I be specific. Who, which community are you being targeting? Talking to? It's a like I always say. A Google search is free. You can always look at the receipts. If I can find the receipts, just doing a simple Google search. So can you? So stop accusing and stop pointing to a community who's been sounding the alarm for years. It's not. It's, it's, it's only when it happened to you that's when you take take concern of saying, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, where was everyone else?" No, this is the same lesson that y'all, everyone in, in this country, keep on repeating and doing the same madness, time and time again. It's to repeating the same cycle, and all comes back to black people warned you. I land my plane. Thanks so much, JZ. I appreciate it. So up next, we have Miss Kay and then um, Chima Riri and um, Tiff and Jay. Hi, everyone. How, how have you been? Uh, I haven't. Great. I haven't while. seen you around. Hi, I know. Yeah, no, I've been around. I look at your posts and hey, Eugene, I. I'm glad we reconnected because I thought I lost you for a minute. And um, I can uh, maybe piggyback a little bit about um, of what we were just hearing and talking about. A lot of that has so much to do with with what I've actually been talking to military chaplains about. Uh, because not only are we in the fight for our democracy, uh, we are minimized in our democracy in our own country, but we're also attacked and we're also uh, sending resources out you know to protect democracy globally and it's very stressful it's very stressful i get it um actually i feel it <laughs> i've actually had to have um some wellness checks conducted on me where I talked to those people uh, who were checking on me about what I was stressed out about. And uh, I can tell you this. I know there is history that pertains to what's happening today. And that distresses me because throughout history what 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 happened and what didn't happen uh, and in fact what did happen well 
our rights were being subjugated throughout those years. Well, when I say our, I, I say people like me. Um, because I'm a minority. A lot of people in my family don't think they're minorities. And that scares me. Because I know I am. And I can tell you. Well, let me just put it to you this way. In 2014, after not to get into a national or an international kind of conversation, but in 2014, after Crimea was annexed, the Steve Jobs Memorial uh, iPhone kind of memorial that they had was removed from Russia just because Tim Cook came out as gay. I came out when I was 15 years old back in 1993, or at least I started coming out back then. So to me, that's important. But also, I've been very active um, in a lot of humanity and human rights types of um, advocacy throughout my life and since then. And at this point, you know, I've really felt, well, since that happened, does that mean that Apple is a target? Does that mean that uh, Sarmat RS-28 is targeting California and the Bay Area, especially where tech exists, just because they're jealous of the success and well, you know what they call some of those companies, Miss Kay? Uh, they call them the woke companies. And I, it was last week, I think I posted something. One of the congressional um, GQP members, I can't remember what he said, but uh, um, was somebody reporting about, I think, the money and, and funding that they were getting. And they were uh, basically... Um, basically warning companies that, you know, the, the, the funding that they got, they didn't want funding from these woke corporations or whatever, or warning them against being too woke, which is basically being too, you know, like pro rights. Yeah. Like, you know, like um, considering uh, the rights of the LGBT community, because a lot of this, you know, like I said, going back to the article that, you know, that Heidi, um, uh, did that I posted in, in the Chumbotron. And keep in mind, that was like two years ago. So we have seen this really kind of unfold and the connections be made more and more. But I, I say this because a lot of this this um, global attitude around LGBT, uh, LGBTQ um, communities is a global thing and it also ties back to Russia. It's like this moralist policing um, that they have put under the umbrella of family values and they're using that to suppress the rights of other people and to actually target them and to harm them. So I appreciate you actually interjecting with that information because I can actually, if I have, I don't know how much time I have to talk, but um, I have a, a lot of history with that. And I could probably talk your ears off for hours. So I'll try to keep it succinct. But at the same time, thank you for giving me this space because I've actually sang concerts about the pink triangle and 
it's not a celebrating kind of conversation. I mean, those were depressing con- concerts. They really had to do with the Holocaust and what the pink triangle means. <laughs> and what the pink triangle still means. For a lot of us, the pink triangle meant that we were the first to go. And what I understand is that even though that kind of labeling doesn't exist anymore, it doesn't exist anymore because everybody is a number. Everybody is an IP address. We know who we are. And we know that other people and governments know who we are based on the color of our skin, based on the values that we hold, based on who we are. And my sexuality isn't the only thing about me. It's really not the only thing about me, but that's not my defense. Well, thank you so much, um, Miss Kay. Um, why don't you take a moment but, there? I do have a few hands up. Uh, if you can, just kind of wind it up, but you don't have to go anywhere. We can come back to it. I just want to give you a moment. But I, I understand your pain there, you know, because it is like, you know, for for those who do understand um, history, you recognize these things that are being repeated um, in present day times and you see we see and feel the danger of that so i i feel you because Thank that's you. where i am a lot of days is that this this is not new uh it may be new for some people but you know the tactics that they're using are not new and this is again like i said while uh they work to basically whitewash or prevent history from being told so people will act like it's new and not Mm. recognize the end result of where this past behavior led you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's very intentional and I just want to thank you for coming up and and speaking and sharing and being so vulnerable and you know for the work and the advocacy work you know and other work that you do I uh, just appreciate you. I want to give you a moment to, you know, just kind of gather yourself and thank you for sharing with us, but don't go anywhere. You're certainly free to chime back in. If I can, before kind of Mm -hmm. letting off, uh, you know, my, my role of, you know, speaking, thank you so, so much for recognizing that because a lot of people would just say, what are you talking about? Thank you for not saying that. Thank you for recognizing that. And part of why I joined this call has a lot to do with indigenous rights and black Americans' rights as well. And I don't mean to say that because Eugene and you are indigenous and black. It has a lot to do with the fact that I'm American also. It has a lot to do with where else am I going to go? And the fact that um, I actually have a lot of military knowledge Well, the I... fact that you keep doing this means a lot because um, because what else are we going to do, right? Are we going to run from a nuclear bomb or are we going to run toward each other? Look to the helpers. 
And certainly there are a great number in this community, this collective community. And I'm thankful. Uh, 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 All right. I thank you for coming and joining us today and sharing in the conversation. And I thank you, Jean, for continuing to, you know, for starting this space and for, you know, our ability to con- continue to to keep it going, to give people an opportunity to have a voice and also to, you know, galvanize and strategize and do the work that we know we need to do to save our democracy. Because I think most of the people in here, again, it's like we're preaching to the choir. We understand the danger, but it is important sometimes to delve down in it. I, yes, we're 28 days away and truly 28 days away from whether determining whether or not we remain a democracy. And there are, you know, very ugly aspects of us not being a democracy. You know, we can talk about, you know, all the different, you know, um, types of uh, governments that are not, um, you know, democracies and some of the atrocities and things that went on, but certainly marginalized communities and people such as yourself and Eugene and I um, are some of the first targeted and, and to go. So. Um, that is why we're here every day. We understand um, the significance of us not having a democracy and what that means to you know our lives, literally. So thank you for being here and being part of that conversation. We're going to continue with, um, I think, uh, Jima Riri, then Tiff, then Jay, then Kevin. Hello. Um Love, love, love to you, Miss Kay. Thank you for sharing that. I know that wasn't easy. Um, I wanted to say that I did catch last night part of that Republican reparations discussion. I want to say it was either Tiff or Shauna that had posted, and then I joined in. Um, There was so much. I missed this, so please. Oh, my goodness. Well, I think one of them said they asked to be dragged. And I was like, "Ooh, I got to listen to this. So I do have to say, though, there was a lot of nonsensical GOP fuckery. Um, Unfortunately, it seems that people um, have bought into. Uh, There was someone on there who was trying to say they were a reconstructed kind of Republican or something. Um, I couldn't understand that nonsensical stuff, um, but they were quoting. Yes, it is nonsense, and it, it makes but no they were sense. Using, D, they were using something from the Democratic Party from like 1921 or something as their example. And I need to give a huge flower like the garden. the Dixiecrats or some, some nonsense? Yeah, something okay. crazy. But okay. Terry, Terry deserves all the flower gardens. He debunked all of that nonsense wow was he phenomenal too i was just like go terry go um i just it was really eye-opening for me as a white woman because i didn't know we had that many republicans that were black that bought into what this gop is selling and lastly with kanye i think it was last week i had said with the whole candace thing and the white lives matter shirts It's a very uh, political public stunt. And let's remember, when Trump announced that he was going to run, they had the whole big public setup of the escalator. Uh, They had him coming down. What did Trump say? We were getting uh, rapists and murderers from Mexico. What did Kanye just say about the Jewish community? It is so eerily to me. It's the same political GOP stunt. Candace and Kanye will profit from this. Trump is still profiting from political packs and donations. Um, So beware. Beware of my GOP white nonsensical fuckery people. They will infect you. Um, We as white people in America have been indoctrinated to be racist. And I, I don't remember who was saying it. I think it was Tiff that was saying it. I have to catch myself, too, sometimes. Um, Again, I work very hard to be an ally, but there are things that go through my mind sometimes that I say, Marie, you know better. You know better, girl. Why are you thinking that? I have to correct myself, too. 
So with that, I'm landing my plane. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Jim Riri. I, I appreciate it. And yes, uh, Tip was absolutely right. I've had that conversation with friends before. We all have our own biases and prejudices, um, but you know, I think recognizing them, catching ourselves, and you know, when we know better, we we do better. And um, that's the most that we can ask of ourselves and 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 others. So thank you so much for that. And, and I'm glad that you now have an awareness. So this is, again, why I say it is important. Like, I don't go, but I don't try to tell other people what to do. But it is important for people to understand and see what's going on. So now you have a broader uh, picture and perspective of, of the things that are affecting um, our fight for our democracy. And, and in some cases, it's within our own community, which makes it even more Difficult and frustrating, and, and it's by design, which makes me quite angry. But thank you so much, Jim Riri. Appreciate you being here with us today and joining in. And next up, we've got Tiff. And yes, um, Terry, it's one of the few times that I did go into that chaos space um, when I saw Terry at the mic. And the other time is when Geechee was there because I knew that it was absolutely going to be an onslaught of facts and information. And I wanted to be there for that. <laughs> and I left after that because I was so mad because as soon as they start, you know, really getting into, you know, the good factual information, they would drop them down. And, you know, then they would get. But I love that Terry and Geechee, neither one, they would they were relentless. It was like, nope, nope, nope. I want to come back up. I want to come back up. And so um, I'm glad that we have warriors um, with that kind of uh, ability like. Terry Geechee, and we have some others who can just straight spit the facts out right there in real time. Like, I think most of us understand what's going on, but to be able to uh, uh, address it and, and spit those facts out like that, not a lot of us can do that. So I'm, I'm in awe of them and I love it. So I'm glad you had a chance to experience that. <laughs> so uh, go ahead. I think Tiff, you're next. Well, it definitely was an experience. I wouldn't say it was a good experience, but it was definitely an experience last night because I, Greg was the one who told me about it because I don't, I really hate going into those spaces, but I was like, come. And when I got in there, Uncle Luke was just going off saying, you know, what are y'all going to do now? And blah, blah, blah. He was like, tell this one and tell that one to come in here. Let me talk to them because I got something to say. And it was it was so funny. And I just I just ended up staying so who, We had a good time calling? on that space. We was TK. Who was oh he calling in? Who was oh, he? Was, he was calling in the ops. Okay. Um, yes. yes. And y'all all know who the ops are. So mm -hmm. if you don't know who the ops are, you 